<coughs> all right <coughs> corona what is going on people hope you're doing well as we all know with the coronavirus spreading it's best to stay at home if you don't know what to do well this is a great time to do some epic product shots if you see my previous videos you might know that i shoot most of the product b-rolls by myself at home for this video i teamed up with the one and only tony leverick larson Woo! <laughs> who is a Norwegian photographer and videographer living in España. On his channel, he does a variety of awesome B-roll product shots and might have some very useful tips for you. So with no further ado, Tony, show us what you got. First off, let me just say, these tips are my own preferences. They won't apply to every creator and every setup out there, but I personally have found them to help me quite a bit when producing both personal and commercial work. Tip number one is use a soft light. By soft, I mean light that doesn't create super hard shadows. My preferred way is using the ambient light from the window. I make sure to have my setup placed so that the window casts the light from the top side and down. One way to see if your light is diffused enough is to place the tip of your finger down on the same surface where you're placing your products and see how clearly you can see the shadow that your finger is casting. Tip number two is to create a setup that works both for video and photos. I see a lot of cool setups that works great for product photography, but sadly won't work for video. Depending on the project, try to create a setup that works for both. It'll save you a lot of time and money in the long run. Tip number three is when in doubt, less is more. It's hard to get specific on this tip because it's really just a leap of faith. But let's compare it to making food. When cooking a dish, it's more important to have a few high quality ingredients and preparing them well than it is to just throw in a ton of different ingredients and spices that basically just drowns the essential taste of the dish. Me personally, I would rather spend more energy on getting light color and composition correct than buying a lot of props. But don't be afraid to experiment because it is a creative field. Just make sure you have the basics correct, maybe shoot the basics first and then experiment and see how it goes. Oh, my turn. Yeah. All right, that was awesome. Tony, thanks for the great tips. So we all have different styles of creating a product video. Here is an example of a product video I shot at home. Ready for that? So here are my tips on what I find important when shooting a product video. Tip number one is to try to make the product look interesting. For the product shot, I added a black acrylic floor that makes the watch reflect off the ground. It gives it a luxury feeling to it and just makes the overall scene look more interesting. And to me, it's little details like this that make a big difference. It's important to clean the surface using a microfiber sheet to remove the unwanted fingerprints. I built out the rest of the set by adding some coffee beans, which I thought would match great with the golden color of the watch and adds more depth to the scene. There are really no rules to this. You have to try and test out to see what works for the product. Just remember that the scenery will reflect the product's message. Tip number two is to use proper lighting. It's important to have a soft light by adding a diffuser and getting it as close as possible to the product so that the light is nice and spread out. To isolate the product more, I added a honeycomb over the diffuser. For my second light, I included an aperture M9 to light for the reflections and to make it a little bit brighter. It was kind of hard to light this product because sometimes the light would reflect on the glass of the watch so I had to work around it to find a good reflection. I added a third light to brighten the other side to make it look evenly lit. Try experimenting around and shape your light in a way that makes the product stand out more. For my last tip, tip number three is to add movement to the product. Under the platform, I added a motorized turntable that allows the product to rotate smoothly. You can also buy a cheap turntable in Ikea if you are on a budget. For the smooth push in and slide shot, I used the iFootage Shark Slider. It's important to try to get as many different 
shots as possible to have more option in post. Everything was shot on the Sony a7 III in 4K, 25 frames per second and 1080p 50 frames per second using the Sony 24 to 105. F4. If you shoot in 4K, you have the option to do some digital push-in or moves and speed wraps. I believe that it's easier to shoot videos of people than of products because a product doesn't move, it doesn't show any emotion, in fact it doesn't do anything and your job as a filmmaker is to make the product come to life. So these were our simple tips on how to shoot a product video at home. Challenge yourself, use anything you have, a fork, a shoe, whatever, and start practicing. Would love to see what you have come up with. I want to thank Tony for joining me in this video. If you haven't checked out his channel, he does not only create product videos, but also real estate, music videos, and more. So go check him out and give him some love. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching. Stay at home and see you in the next video.